So yeah, I'm just typing something into uh, Wikipedia. It's completely irrelevant. <laughs> Don't, you know, pay no attention to the man behind the curtain. It's nothing's happening. It's fine. It's all coming from my knowledge. Now, if I look over there, it's irrelevant. It's just my notes. I don't think we should have done this with Roy Harper. Because this is nothing to do with that at all. Which I didn't expect. No, I don't know. I thought we were doing two folk things and we'd like compare them. But Roy Harper is kind of... Well, I would call it prog. You know, it's a totally different thing. So, you know, it's this almost is... like prog folk Roy Harper. Yeah, yeah, and not only that, but it's Bob Dylan. Bob <laughs> it's Dylan. bloody Bob Dylan. We're not worthy of doing this. It's wrong. It's wrong. It's very wrong. Sorry. You know the the angriest comments we get, I, th I think ever, apart from Michael Jackson, is um, Trapmas Replica. Uh, pe people are really upset that we were. <laughs> so, not only that you didn't like it, but I was laughing. <laughs> it is funny that's fine I didn't say it was bad you know I'm sitting there saying it's good but that's not good enough the fact that we said it was funny <laughs> it's you know what the fuck is this fuck you <laughs> so I tried to think what we're going to get on Bob Dylan <laughs> it's pretty Bob Dylan and the, the, so controversially what we decided remember we had a little bit of a comments vote on what we should do and it was a bit undecisive because we didn't have many comments um, but this is what we're doing now. So we're doing one album each decade. And I had, in the end, I chose this one. I think this was the one to do from this decade. And some, to some people, that would mean we're leaving out the story because he's already done folk, and he's already done the transition into folk, into blues, blues rock, whatever it is. And this is the album. This is you know the the big album of um, blues folk. Or folk rock, or, or whatever it is that, that he started doing. When did the? Because I know um, I know very little about Bob Dylan, but I know there was a massive controversial incident where he started playing electric guitar and people yep. got really upset. How, how how far away are we from that? Uh, maybe about a year, I think. Because he's already yes. done an album of half and half, right? And nobody likes that. That particular album isn't isn't a, a much loved album. It's a transitional album. And that's when he got the uh, the booze at the famous concert at some folk festival or something. <laughs> and yeah. uh, people shouting out for, Where, where's the protest songs? So people were complaining that he's not Rage Against the Machine. <laughs> no. We liked it in the good old days when he did Rage Against the Machine. Um, he kind of still is, but it's less blatant than, you know, it's not like Roger Waters full on. The politicians, da, 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 da. Um, he does say something about politicians in this. Actually, you know, it was certainly seen as a uh, an anti-establishment album and all the rest of it at the time. What's interesting to me, I mean, we've already done folk rock in that we did Jethro Tull, which is very rock, and we did Fairport Convention, which is very much the the pivotal moment of what we would call folk rock but that's european folk you know which is th this is you know bob dylan does folk that's actually american folk isn't it it's it's a very different thing much more about poetry you know it's much more about the lyrics i mean european folk has a very different idea about the lyrics you know in the, in the u.s folk it is you know folk music like Zappa does folk music in that he's singing about the times and blah blah blah. So, but surely, surely, isn't American folk blues? I thought it was. <laughs> so, mm. he's actually just incorporating a, what was what was actually a, 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 a newly dis, a rediscovered earlier that century American folk. Suddenly, everyone had realised it's actually really good. So it's. it's Surely it's predictable that that would be the direction he would go in, rather than just him with a guitar. But yeah, so th but this album, which is it is it's that big. This album, it's that big. It's bigger than big. You know, Sergeant Pepper, Dark Side of the Moon. It's it's Bob Dylan. It's ridiculous. We shouldn't be reviewing it. Um, and it's so fantastically organic. 
in that it's a perfect perfectly captures something of a band just playing together where the musicians he'd hired didn't really know what they were supposed to be doing they just did it you know it was like perfectly managed chaos and they did loads and loads and loads of takes of each song he did not I think he did three takes or maybe more than that of um, Desolation Row which is however long it is it's 10 minutes 11 minutes 11 minutes yeah, yeah. yeah and he had to keep playing it because they kept doing it because no one knew what how to do it so they just kept going <laughs> kept trying it and you know um, so it's really noisy that reflects what it is you know Highway 61 is is the blues highway uh, which follows the Mississippi and I hope that's right <laughs> I think it does but apparently yeah Robert Johnson it's one of the roads on, on the crossroads that Robert Johnson supposedly sold his soul oh, to the devil so the crossroads are on highway right okay fantastic that's it's good the road. that's good so I've got must be the right road <laughs> If Robert Johnson's crossroad, it's the right one. It's good. It's fine. So yeah, really noisy and really uh, bluesy. In in in, I mean, it's weird. I mentioned beef heart. It's not like beef heart, but it has that noisiness. And ironically, like the Rolling Stones. That's <laughs> actually, um, and it's it even it's kind of a bit of a downer. And it is it is a moan. It is oh life's hard and it is bad and you know, but then it's really uplifting, and that that's a blues thing. So you know, in a, that is definitely blues, you know. So yeah, it's 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 good. Uh yeah. Uh, I thought we were going to have to when I was when I listened to it. I thought, I met, I'm sure I mentioned previously that I'm not really into pop doing. I'm just expecting some. Guy to moon in some white phone. I have to listen to the lyrics to really get something out of it. I thought we were going to end up calling this video "Dickhead Listens to Bob Dylan for the First Time and Is Blown Away." Ah, because okay. it, <laughs> it's flipping amazing. I mean, we couldn't do Stormcock and this at the same time because that would have been they're two totally different in a row. Yeah, they're so, totally different. They're Not, totally different, yeah. but they're two brilliant albums that would have. Uh, I think their proximity to each other would have diminished the sort of. That's what worried me. Yeah, as soon yeah. as I put it on, I thought, ah, yeah, this is great, yeah. but it's not. It's not. I, it sounds very bluesy. Too. It doesn't sound folky at all to me. I'll be honest with you. Apart from maybe Desolation Row is quite. Uh, that's only because it's acoustic, really. Um, yes. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's a really, really. When you try and put it into context, 1965. Yeah. Yeah. This is sort of like this is like a mega a mega thing, I think. This is sort of like yeah. I can I can sit I, I kind of get it now. The dawn the of lyrics, all, yeah. The, 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 the beginning. poetry, <laughs> the poetry is still really really good. Yeah, the poetry mm. is really important to this. Yeah, yeah. Um, but everything about it is is kind of it's special. It's 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 kind of it's an it's a new iteration of of, of something. It's kind of hard to put into words, really. I, I want to call it almost perfect, but it's not perfect in the sense that everything is played to perfection. Well, no, exactly. It's in the sense that even the, even the bits that aren't quite right add yeah. to the sound somehow. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a genius. There's something in his ears. I don't know that, obviously, because this is completely new, um, there's something in his ears that just, just resonated with him and... He knew that that's that's the way that song song should be. Yeah. I mean, I've, I managed to listen to a few different versions of like when they were developing like a Rolling Stone and, mm -hmm. and things like that. And it takes a lot to laugh. It takes a train to cry, which is actually quite a, a slow song. But actually, they they tried it at the the, the normal speed because everything's quite quite fast for that time. So he's obviously got the ear right because he's not—he's not just saying, "Well, we've got to play everything at breakneck speed and get the the guitar in and and do all sorts of crazy solos and stuff like that." He he, he knows he knew to slow that song down, but he knew like a Rolling Stone had to, you know, go for it and Tombstone Blues, you know, had to do what it did. Um, so there's sort of like a a, pro a producer's ear there almost. It's like he's sort of. He's done enough now. He's he he's only you know he's he's done his albums up till now, which has been one thing. 
Yeah. And one of the famous quotes about um, Bob Dylan is that at this point of his life, it was it was really getting him down that everyone was telling him how great he was when he didn't actually think what he was doing was that great. Yeah, it was already it, yeah. supposed to be. <gasps> and this is this is what he wanted to do. He finally got the freedom freedom to do it. Um, he says, "Like a Rolling Stone" is the best song he's ever written, and it's a single. It's six minute ten ten seconds long. Um, that doesn't sound like a nineteen sixty five single to me. Um, apparently, mm. the the record label wanted to do it a, a, three, a three minute version, have it go over two sides, and they said no. Yeah, yeah. and they uh, they managed um, to win that one. So he's obviously got a lot of clout with the with the label now. Yeah, well, just that. Just think how important that is. Yeah, just that. Yeah. Like a Rolling Stone is a, is is a big song. It's like yeah. <laughs> when you think about it, it sort of it it does break. I, I can I started to see what people are. It, it breaks rules. Yeah. So it's called like a Rolling Stone. You expect like a Rolling Stone to be the the big moment in the song, but actually the chorus. Is is quite boring. It's it's the line. How does it feel? That's really the oh, highlight. Yeah, of course, of the song. yeah. It's not like a rolling stone, yeah. isn't no, it? It's, how does it feel? How yeah. does it feel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then it sort of it kind of dribbles away after that. I, think. I mean, the chorus is all right, obviously, but I mean, I I just think that's so unnormal. It's not normal, and it and it and it works, and yeah. that is a that's. He, he, He's not just a poet, even though the poetry is pretty, pretty yeah. clever. Yeah, I mean, some of that is obviously what he named himself. I mean, you know, he called himself Dylan. <laughs> Which, at the start, must have been like, "Fuck you." Mm. <laughs> but you know, you know yeah. and, the, and the question is whether it was true, whether the sixties was true. I don't. Um, he is the. I do think the guy is a genius. Yeah, I don't think he's there crafting perfect poetry. I think he's just got an ear for it. Yeah, he writes something that's interesting, that rhymes well, um, but is not sort of like it doesn't doesn't plod. I mean, I was listening to one guy break down the first sort of lines and the and the rhyming parts. The first line it's on the fifth syllable, and the second line it's on the fourth syllable. And that's so he gets a little bit of extra time. He's swinging, and it's sort of he's like he gets a little bit of time, and uh, and that sort of adds emphasis onto the onto the bit that comes after it. And instead of saying who, as as most people would, he, he actually puts something in there. I can't remember what line is. Is it? To, it's not to you. Is it how? No, I can't remember anyway. Um, yeah, and it's sort of like that. That's really clever. That's not like normal guy with. Um, pen just trying to make things rhyme. That's like proper. Yeah, musicians trying to write lyrics, which is yeah, what we're that's, that's about. proper. Yeah. That's proper poetry. That that's proper skill. Um, oh yeah, once once upon a time you dressed so fine, threw the burns a dime in your prime, didn't you? Yeah, it's that didn't you? Doesn't it? It sort of yeah. it gives that little, and it, that's that's three syllables, didn't you? But he yeah. manages to get into two. He yeah. says, "Didn't you?" Yeah. I, I mean, that's pretty. Pretty special, man. Um, yeah, so I, I, I was, I was, I was quietly blown. If, if like a Rolling, I, I would expect, you know, from a, an album like this, that like a Rolling Stone would be the big song, that'd be the good song, and then you'd have a lot of filler. But it's not that at all. I mean, no, there no. are, there are a lot of good songs on here. Well, a lot, I mean, they're, they're they're famous songs. You got yeah, Tombstone Blues. Tomb, you got Ballad of the Thin Man. Yeah, Highway Ballad 61, of the Thin Man is great. Desolation Row, they're all they're they're yeah. big songs. Yeah. Big songs, yeah. This is this is great, and they're all sort of unified by a theme. I know you said it's it's you know it is a protest thing, but it's not like that, that much. But it actually is when you listen to it. It's sort of like it's it's really having a pop at the at the Metropolitan Elite, basically the sort of thing, um, and it sort of it gives it. It gives it a cohesiveness. Without it becoming, I think he's singing about what he's experiencing. He's part of that now, and he doesn't like it. And he's wrote an album about it. It's not like a concept album where they've, you know, they've thought, okay, what we're going to write an album about, and wrote a load of songs to it. Yeah. It's just like they've come out like that because that is what he's feeling at the moment. Yes, because he's just become and, a part of it. Yeah. 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 
and it gives it a great a great sense of authenticity. It doesn't feel forced, uh, as you say. It feels incredibly natural, and it sounds it sounds great. I, I, I love this album. I can't believe I've never listened to Bob Dylan before. <laughs> I just thought because I just thought he was just a guy who moaned into meh, 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 you know <laughs> nasal can't sing you know listen to the covers don't listen to Bob Dylan I mean Obviously, Bar- don't do that Bar- listen yeah. to Highway 61 oh yeah listen to the 60s <laughs> albums basically yeah, That's, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're not going to do Blonde on Blonde and that's sort of like I know that's the big one isn't it that's the one I, I know I can't believe it's better than this I don't know. The problem is I know Blonde on Blonde too well. So I don't know. Whereas this one I don't know that well. I only know the famous songs. Right. So I don't, I don't know. But yeah, I mean, we would be repeating ourselves if we were doing Blonde on Blonde. That's okay. the problem. Yeah, I mean, we, for, you know, for balance. <laughs> I mean, I my, my my parents... No, actually, no. My mum likes Bob Dylan and my dad doesn't. And I've seen a lot of, of, of live performances in later life by Bob Dylan. <laughs> And that is him with the guitar. I'm sure I've, to- I've probably told this story before, but it's a good story that when my parents went to see him, probably in the late 80s, I think, maybe 90s, um, it was just him with the guitar. He was touring as just him. And uh, they spotted, in there was like an, a v- VIP area, they spotted Jeff Lynne and George Harrison in the audience. And then halfway through the gig, they disappeared. And then they appeared at the side of the stage, waiting to come on. And they were going to play with him. Oh, my God. And he just never invited them on. <laughs> he didn't say a word, apparently. He just sung the songs and went off. <laughs> I'm, glad he said, I'm glad he said that, actually. Because, I mean, I, one thing that occurred to me is the stories... There's a lot of characters throughout the stories. And they are... I don't know how he does it. They are interesting characters, yeah. They're, they're good characters, which kind of gave me a bit of a Beatles vibe you know there was always in in, in, the, in, in the later Beatles music you yeah. had sort of like um, characters coming polythene Pam and and stuff yeah. like that that's um, where the, that's where they got the, the well the John Lennon that's that's what he was thinking when he was doing that I'm sure I'm sure because I thought I suddenly thought actually this feels quite Beatles and this is before this is before the Beatles wasn't it this is before the Beatles were doing that yeah before the Beatles too yeah, so obviously incredibly influential, and there's a punk element to it as well, like a Rolling Stone. It is sneering at uh, the establishment. Yeah. Um, obviously, the musically it's a, it's a lot better than that, but there's a there's sort of um, a, a, well, a proto punk punkness to it. You could imagine sort of like yeah, or the the description of punk as people write about punk. It's it in, in that it's. It's having a go at people and, and has an energy to it. What a good album. Yeah, it's a good album. Did you know? Highway <laughs> <laughs> 61 Resistance is a good album. Who knew? Yeah. Uh, um, what was I going to say? Oh, yeah. I mean, I was really stuck on what album to choose because I really wanted to do the one with Mr. Tamarine Man on it because I wanted to talk about William Shatner. And, and my, I know. Did he cover it? Yeah, hey, and Mr. Tambourine Man. Mr. Tambourine Man. <laughs> he just shouts at the end. And I, that, for me, that's his best one. Like, people talk about uh, Rocket Man, and and for that, for me, that's the best Shatner song. Is Mr. Tambourine Man? It sounds like he's caught him at the end. <laughs> I like Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Yeah, yeah, that yeah. Got yeah to, that's, that that's got to one. number one. That did. He did. Yeah, yeah. But you have to Do remember yourself. that that first mm. album he did, not Bob Dylan. I mean Shatner. He was serious. It wasn't a joke. It was called the Transformed Man, and it was all profound and stuff. You know, now he's it's, it's a joke, and he does space trucking and stuff. But it, you know, in your jingle, jangle, something. Uh, is there anything else to say? This is the problem. I had very little. Did you have you heard the anecdote about the the organ in like a Rolling Stone? No. Do 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 do. Basically, the, the the producer, I can't remember his name, invited a session guitarist along who was a big Bob Dylan fan. Oh, right. And the guy bought his guitar hoping that, you know, as, as the room loosened up, he might be able to get to play something. Yeah. Thanks. He just wanted to be on a Bob Dylan album. And then the, the guitarist came in and, and plugged in and started warming up and he was like, oh, 
and just bailed out. Couldn't do it. He went and sat in the booth. All right. And they're, they're going along. They're doing they're doing takes of like a Rolling Stone, and uh, the, I think they're struggling to get it right. There's something something not quite right. And the producer says, "Well, to the to the, the pin, the guy playing the organ, you go on the piano and play it on the piano. Maybe that's what we need." And the session player said to him, he goes, well, I've got an idea for the organ. Do you mind if I go and sit on the organ? He says, but you don't play the organ. And uh, he, he took that as to say, well, he didn't say no. and just walk, walked out and sat on the organ. And uh, he literally didn't know what he was doing. And that was the take. And that was the take. So basically, that's why it's a little bit out. Right. So he's an eighth of a note behind or something like that because he's literally waiting for them to play the chords before he's putting his fingers on the keys. Right. Sort of thing. He couldn't really hear chords. what was going on because it was so loud. <laughs> and uh, that's magic happens. Bob Dylan comes into the booth and the producer says, "It's okay, don't worry about that. We can we can take that out." And he's like, "No, I turn it up. I like that sound. He's he's, he's onto something. Turn it up." And that's why it's so prominent. And apparently, he was on Blonde on Blonde, and so you know, he got a little bit of a, a career of playing with with Bob Dylan out of that. Okay, we we won't. I'm trying to keep later stories. For, for later reviews so I think that album is a good album and yeah. remember that the egg rating is a personal thing so it is a five egg album for me it's not a six egg album because it doesn't you know it doesn't touch me personally it's just a brilliant album well, I've only listened to it a few times this week in my life um, mm. so I'm going to give it five eggs I don't know how it will play over time whether I get a bit bored of it but at the moment, I'm completely smitten with this. I can't believe we've done Stormcock and Highway 61 Revisited so close. Yeah. And it's sort of two, two big albums. I'm starting to wonder, maybe there is um, a folky thing that I, that I quite like, even though this one wasn't that folky. Well, you probably like American folk. I mean, you like blues, don't you? Yeah. So that's, that might be what it is. I mean, although... Yeah, Roy Harper is is American folk style, isn't he? Yeah. Not, not um, he doesn't sound like Fairport Convention. Maybe he is. American psychedelic progressive folk. Yes. Yep. Yeah. And next, uh, we're doing. What's it called? The one with idiot wind on it. Uh, I can't remember. Hang on. Where's his albums? It's not Blonde on Blonde. We're not doing that one. Sorry. That's what we'll get. People will say, why, why are you reviewing that other one? Blood on the Tracks, that's it. Blood on the Tracks, yeah. Blood on the Tracks, yeah. So we're, we're going to fast forward to 1975. Mmm. And so forth. And thank you. Hot Bob Dylan Quest. <laughs> 